Hey, welcome back. So today in this session, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to I'm going to try to implement uh, text entities in the game. Um, I may not finish this today because I'm a bit tired. So this definitely um, I want this session to be short. Um, maybe half an hour let's see how far we can get um so what is an, a text entity um okay so i would like to have in this game an entity that i can use to um drive the story a little bit by showing text to the user what to the player um what type of text um well i still don't know but probably i don't know i was thinking about maybe some sort of uh, journal or maybe some type of uh, perhaps um, I don't know communication internal communication system like email perhaps that you can get get into during the game and you can read information about what's going on or or use that we can even use that for puzzles by, by showing that text um, so I mean that's the, the basic idea um, and for that well I have a plan to add an entity a new entity that is going to be uh, actually I have already some um, placeholder because I that was part of the um, of the initial plan so I have already a name for it that is called term terminal and I have I have the I have the graphic and everything. So uh, let's, for example, probably take a look to the graphic here. So this is the graphic I have for the terminal. Uh, let's see how it looks. Something like that. It's going to look like. Um, I mean, this is the the map layer, but it has to be an entity, not part of the map. Um, potentially, we could implement that as part of the map, but then every time you, you every time you move, or maybe uh, when you press fire, I should check if the tile on top uh, is the type terminal, and then find which terminal it is to find the text and. Um, I don't know, I think it's a little bit messy. Um, it's probably more efficient than the way I'm going to use. Uh, but I think uh, it's going to be fine. Um, we can just, I can just change that later. It's not good enough, but. So, okay, let's do it. Let's get, for example, let's use the key. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to call it term. And what else? Probably has a property called text. It's going to be string. And this is a test. Something like that. Mm. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I, I plan to use the font I have only has 64 characters, so it's not going to have uppercase or lowercase. So we probably need to take that into account when when we process the text. It has to be uppercase or you know converted to whatever it is that we use internally. Anyway, right. So with this, we have a terminal, an entity terminal and some text as a property and replace that somewhere, right? So let's get back to this. Mm. Just this a little bit. Right, so, right. so we have already a terminal entity. Now the thing we should be doing is, um, doing now is look at the map importer we have here we had already a placeholder for the terminal. It's going to be term, 
and I happen to have some text here already that actually I'm not completely sure if I I have used that before. I'm not sure if I use this in in why I use this. I think I wrote this for did I use that in kernel? I don't remember. I kind of recall I was using this for an MSX project that I put on hold. It's called uh, Moonstone. And then this call, yeah. So basically, I don't know. So basically, because we only have 64 characters, uh, we uh, pack the test into 6 bit instead of 8 bit. So we save um, a lot of space. And we also have some special characters. 63 and 62 um, that basically you know a page break or in the line so we can have multiple pages we know you we may not use that but for now we can leave it like that um, and I think I when we were when I was doing some changes here I commented this uh, because I had this already um, so this is cool it means that Again, <laughs> I probably need to uh, so I probably need to understand this, um, but let's see. So, uh, so I'm doing it like this because why I'm doing it like that? I mean, at the moment it looks like we only have one type of there is only a terminal here. So, yeah, uh, I assume that we could have multiple text entities, uh, which is basically we spread the text property and it should have text on it. Um, so we could be having, but for now we're going to have only terminals. So I'm going to leave it like that, just terminals, sounds okay. Um, so this gets the text property for the object and we're doing that this way because yeah this is to have compatibility with different versions of of, of the map editor uh, it's called tiled um, so we get the text if it's not then this is doesn't make sense anymore does it yeah but this now is a string so it's map tile my file, sorry. And this is going to be name. Pa, 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 pa. So the map has, a, yeah, that's a nice word. You know, if we have a terminal without text, it should report an error. Then what it does is splits the text. What is this doing? Is it splits, splits the text in the number of characters, 28. 28 doesn't make sense. Uh, we're going to have, so we have 32 completely. And we have that frame, which is 30 planets. So we have a blank. Yeah, 28 sounds great. So we're going to have the frame around the action. And then we're going to leave a empty, like another empty uh, one character frame around. So it's not completely touching the frame. This might not look nice. So 28 sounds like a good number. Uh, so we get the text, we split the test in lines, um, if it's too long, then we pack the test, the text, and this, this is not right anymore, this needs to be append, uh, because we treat the maps independent now, instead of extend, so we get the length, oh yeah, okay, so we get the text minus one, meaning that uh, if you have one character, that will be zero. Um, so we need to add one when we get the size. So basically we get the, the text, we split that, then we append the size of the text and then the text itself. Is that correct? Is pack text adding a zero at the end? Yeah, it's adding a zero at the end. Yeah, and we take into account that it has to have some padding otherwise because we call and call one, two, three, four characters. 
so we need to append one zero it, yeah to do padding otherwise when we unpack we may not get the zero at the end which we need that because we're letting that to know what is the end of, of the string when we are printing the string um well in this case yeah so we need the length of the text because we are processing the entities we might want to skip this entity maybe yeah no yeah we need to skip the entity but we need to keep the pointer where we have the text so that's why we include the size and then the text yeah looks looks okay to me right so that should do something let's compile and see what happens uh all oh, right because we changed this to be uh so this is a class now so um so because it's a class we have to say that that's a method of the class and this is no working map entities is not it's not append, it's extend. No, wait a second. What's going on? It's not append here, it's extend. Because text is already, let's see, text is returning, uh, yeah, it's returning a list of, of integers already. So, uh, that was wrong. Right, it compiles but we can't really run this because we don't know how to deal with those entities for now so if we look here into the, the spawn entities code so boom we're going to do the same thing we did with the map link i think let's put it in order because it's slightly better uh, so um, we know it's going to have we know it's going to have extra data because it's going to be the size of the text, right? Um, boo, 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 and we probably need to add uh, yeah maybe here. Um, I like to put things in order, but it really doesn't matter. So it has to go before the term, and we don't have a start yet defined, so we can leave it like that. I thought the player shouldn't be here, but I guess it's fine. Which one? Can we use a, a, an entity as a template? Maybe we can use the door? Perhaps? Yes, we can use the door. So um, let's use this as the template term etm.c and um, term dot h. So this is included. So um, let's open the Terminal here, then let's change some strings. So it's not door, it's a terminal. And we're not going to open the door. And this is a terminal. And terminal tile. Probably we need to know which terminal tile it is. And that is going to be pp 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 go to tile for example how the tiles here so it's zero one two three and it's sixty-four mm. actually we can do something we can do it here so so sixty-four or three that's what I said right so that should be no that's not actually true is this true no it's because this is 16 per 16 and 
Yeah, we're going back to the same thing. So this corner here should be actually we can see wait a second. We can 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 see what was the value we had before. So it's saying sixty-four. Door cost is 64, zero. Ah, oh, because it's map tiles. Oh, man. I think I explained that in, in, the, in, the, in the previous session. <laughs> right, so, so x64. So the door close, I mean, I'm looking at tile at the moment. So the closed door here is 64. So yeah, because this is 16, 32, um, 0, 1, 2. Why is this 64? Hmm. I'm not completely sure about this one. But we can see that, yeah, I don't know, I'm tired, so. Um, so right, so this is 64. Which is close, but well, we're going to do that 32 to that one. So, uh, so 96, and we can leave it like that for now. And we see if that's the one, right? So, et term c. So, let's make some changes here because it's not door, it's term. And then <clears throat> in term open. Oh, there's something we need to change here. So mm -mm. we need to change something here because in it, uh, this is the um, this is the one that takes uh, the entities. Yeah, because the size of the, these entities is going to be variable. So I think when we did the map link, um, I decided that <clears throat> I don't want to, I want, so if we go to here, I don't want this to be aware. And this is assuming that every entity is for, for bytes and we don't want this to know that different entities have different size so we pass the entities pointer and then we return a copy of the pointer so we can move forward here as much as we want so in this case we're going to do ter terminal update which is going to be uh, if the player is touching that we're going to do nothing for now I guess nothing to that for now. Let's add some debug code. So we can do set x border. I don't remember how it was. Is that correct? No. Set border. Oh man. Set border. And yes, yeah, just, just, just blue. Right, so when we touch that. Now, things that we need to do here. So we know that, let's go back to tile. So it is placed in the world. So what we're going to do is, so the entities currently, they draw themselves every frame. Uh, you know, they are visible, which is not very performant. I probably need to change that in the future. For now it's fine, uh, but in this case, we can just change the tile in the map because it's going to be solid. You know, if it's not zero in our map, we assume that it's solid and sorry, that it's blocking your way and the, the crater can move over. But because in this case it's in the wall, we can just replace that and then let the, the map draw the tile. And then when we check for collision, we're going to move down a little bit 
which is one type. So we're going to check down below. And actually, we are not going to check for collision. We're going to check for collision and then the character has to be facing up and press fire. So we're going to use that condition to enable the terminal and read the text. What I think, I mean, this is just what I'm thinking at the moment. I could change my mind later anyway. So this is stuff we don't need for the door, for the terminal, it was part of the door. So here is going to be term tile, right? And after that, we know that the Y is going to be increased because the collision is going to be down, not in the wall, because we can't really get into the wall because it's solid. Right, so I think at this point we can just run make and deal with the downfall. <laughs> so let's say turn in it, mass return a value, excellent, yes, thank you. So, so we're currently not doing anything with the text, so we can say that entity is going to be and plus so we know that we have four so we are already zero will be the first uh, byte index of data so we know it's the size so it's whatever is the size plus one uh, because we start zero we agree that zero is going to be one character Thought we're not going to have one character, but anyway, so it's plus one. And also, we need to count the byte itself with the data. There is telling, uh, telling us how, how, how much test do we have, so it's plus two. So, with that, um, let's see, should be okay. So, what did we do here wrong? So, point to the lost. Okay, so I guess it's because there is a const somewhere we're not using when didn't include. So uh, uh, let's take a look what I did in my link. Yeah, yeah, there's two actually two const because yeah, I mean. Probably doesn't make any, any difference in here because um, because on the specy everything is RAM. There's no ROM anyway. So my that compiles scared. So let's see how it crashes. <laughs> or maybe not. I see. So start. Oh, okay. So that's cool. See, so the tile has been drawn by the map. So we only put it once. So we we actually um, let's close this for a second. So uh, the entity system basically it checks that for the different functions. So you don't have function for update. In this case, we have one here then it would call the, the function, but if it doesn't have draw, it basically skips that entity. Um, so if we compare this with um, with the alien, the alien has draw and has a date. Uh, in this case, we only have a date because the drawing is done by the map. So that's probably the most efficient way you can have, right? Okay, so it works. When we get into the collision area, uh, then Yeah, so we get in the collision area. I must also it has I think uh, well okay. It's not amazing. Are we happy to read the terminal just like that? <laughs> or we have to be just facing that? Hmm. Let's see. So player check. 
does few things and it's actually implemented in assembler so that's pretty good perhaps we should be using this one even oh let's use that for now i mean we said we want a short session right so we are already 25 minutes in and it's almost finished so kind of um so let's change this so if the player checks and uh, let's see what are the player constants here so we have some variables here um so and the direction of the player equals to their up and also uh, 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 and also we want to check that is using fire actually that is probably fine because when we check for fire somewhere here say yeah on fire it's a cool now here blah 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 and bullet new yeah we don't fire if the the point we have in front of us is blocked right because there's no space to fire your blaster so so uh, so that's fine we can use fire without any direction just if you're facing up you're not going to be able to fire the blaster anyway because there is a wall oh thank you uh, there is a wall anyway um so i think it's fine now this I mean, we can even use this. We can even copy this here because that's what we want. Yeah, boom. And then put it here. Now, this CTL variable is updated as part of the. Um, no, I want. As the game loop. So every time we loop, we update that variable with a controller. It could be the joystick, could be keyboard, whatever. So. So let's run that. So now we're hitting that, it's fine. Uh, if we're facing down and we press fire, nothing happens. But if we're facing up and we press fire, we enable the terminal. Cool, this is looking really good. I mean, we didn't have the gun anyway, so we had the blaster. Yeah, the blaster, it's not firing the blaster. It is. I mean, if you look here, the blaster changed color when it's loading. So the cooldown, so you don't, you know, just, it's not firing. So I think this is perfect. Right, so the next thing we need to do is do the text management. And actually, I don't remember. Oh, put text. What is that it's doing? Oh, yeah. Nice. So I have already unpacked this. Yeah, and I'm using a, <laughs> a memory address that I have some. Let's see. Um, yeah, I, well, I try to map, keep this memory map up to date, which is probably not map up to date. It probably is. I hope it is. <laughs> yeah okay so after the interrupt vector table uh for the set 80 in uh in, i am what is i am interrupt mode 2 maybe there are 207 bytes free before the stack uh no no there's something some stuff here i don't remember right now anyway there are 207 bytes that you can use. There's some stuff in here. I don't remember right now, but there's a reason why it's limited to this amount. Um, so, so that means that well, we can we have a limit of 207 bytes. So we can have more than 206 characters of test 
when we unpack. So probably um, we should check this here so we don't go and break stuff, right? So, ba -ba -ba -ba. so, so if the length of text plus plus zero, right? Is that correct? No, we need to do it after packing because the text can be changed. If the length of text is larger than 207, then da, 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 ha. well, I mean, this is stupid. So, term, I mean, it's going to be term entity. Oh, let's leave it like that. <laughs> Just in case we have more text entities. Has term entity with, with text over 207 and instead of doing this like that we can have here text limit and then and then have a text limit here 2007 right so that should still generate our map without breaking anything yeah, of course. Right. So that was a good thing to do. Now this is some pack test. This is the code in C that I wrote. Again, I don't remember if this was, I think this was for the MSX project. I don't think I did this packing with kernel. I don't recall at least. Anyway, so this is ready in assembler, uh, which is good. And yeah, I have functions to write the text already. Although the unpack test, text, unpack text, I mean, the, if this is the C code, it doesn't look that like it's doing anything special with the um, uh, 63 and 64, that is uh, end of line and stuff like that. So for now, <clears throat> we're going to leave it like that. Oh, because I'm using this already, that's why it's here. Yes, I'm using that in, yeah, I'm using this already in some strings. I mean, it's not saving you a lot of stuff, a lot of space, but, and um, yeah, of course, so how about, those are the strings that the game has, and I'm packing those, and because, well, I have already the code to unpack, so, um, you still have to store the string even if you don't pack it and you have to print it pretty much the same so And it's saving your memory and if you look here currently I'm using 16k and the limit is Is 41k more or less and it had 24 so yeah, that's 48k for you I mean you need to be very careful with those things um, Because you're going to run out of memory basically uh, So yeah, that's why that works like that. Right, so we have already the code to put the text. So I think we could even deal with the text printing here. Because this happens during the entity update. So we can we can spend as you know we can spend as much time as we want here, really. Uh, who can we change this to simplify this? No, it's fine. Right. So, 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 what we want to do here is probably clean the player, the play area. Okay. So without removing areas in the frame. So let me see how I was doing that. If I was doing that. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. 
So the game over is doing already something like that. Let's take a look. I don't remember. But it looks like that the game that like it looks like the game over is already so it's filling the screen and then we draw in the frame again. Uh, so we lose the ha down below. I don't want to do that. So we do that. Oh no. Yeah, because we update the screen top only. That's cool. What are the consequences of doing that? I don't know, but we are going to do this because it's quite simple. And actually we need to do this, in fact, because the font is a different type set. So we need to we need to tell um oh that was oh uh -huh, I need to fix this. Damn it. <laughs> Format. Okay, so apparently when I go to Python, then it, I'm changing something when I'm editing Python code and then using that buffer for something else. Because if I'm here, mm, it was not formatting correctly. Anyway, let's move on. So, so fill the screen, draw the frame because so fill the screen is is erasing the complete screen, even the. Uh, even the hat down below. So this is not quite right. This is going to have consequences. And we are going to see that. Um, but let's see. Then we need to send the font tiles. So why is, why is that buffer? Why is that buffer? Yeah. <laughs> so we need to send the font. Then write the test, update the screen. Ah, see, it's not formatting correctly. Anyway, update the screen. Then we set the tiles again because we go back to the game. And I don't know, we can wait for for now. I mean, this is, I mean, we probably need to show the text in a nice way like showing the characters slowly or something you don't want just to print because that looks ugly but uh, we're going to put the text in um, so we said that we leave left uh, so zero will be the first column but we have the frame but then another one so it will be two let's say we're going to say two two for example maybe Oh, is this working? No, we can't really do this. This is not what I'm thinking is doing. So that that text pack expects this text pack expects is expecting that we provide yeah the matter. So this is not what we want to do. We need another another function here for the terminal uh, because we are not. Are we? Shall we unpack the test? The text? No, we can't because we might have multiple terminals in the same map, so we can't do that. Here, actually, we should be. We should store a pointer to where we have. Yeah, that's something we need to do here. We need to save a pointer to the actual text so we can get that back later. So we need to do that. And we also need a, need a different function. This one doesn't work because this is basically getting one of the, an index here, an index of the text that we got from the JSON file. Um, so we probably need another function that is going to be we're gonna put term text maybe and pack because it's packed why not 
so it's going to be sy then it's going to be probably the text itself the text pack then the attribute we're going to use and then text pack here for the attribute we put we put the text All right so we can use this so here so it's available and so it has to be put term text pack x y and then the pointer we still don't know what pointer is that then we take the screen we set the tiles back and then, then we can do for example for keyboard this way for keyboard what is this doing oh it's basically waiting until the key you're pressing something specific on the keyboard you could be doing space but if you're playing with a with the joystick <laughs> that would be awful isn't it mm, 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 mm. well we can do something we can just let's wait for some frames so we can see it we, we still don't know what was how it's going to behave the terminal so it could be as simple uh, i don't know it could be simple as you press a key you know press a space to continue or it could be like you know if it's a some sort of say um internal communication system or the base or whatever there could be a menu or something like that so you can do things like retrieve you know like it could be an email claim for example something like that that would be nice um so I'm still don't know so so let's leave it like that for now um and okay so so we know that in, in entities we have this data here so this is what we have and that's what we have to store stuff so i think we're going to repurpose a couple of things so we can use parameter and delay for example so we can do uh, in uh, new we can get entities so entities we know entities plus one is going to be where because the zero is where I don't remember, I think something like this makes a little bit happier uh, to SDCC. But both things should be fine. I mean, we should be able to do this. So, zero is where we have the size. So, one is the first, uh, is the first character of the, of the text packed, by the way, because we, we, we always keep the text packed until we need to, to pin the text. Um, so that could be, for example, um, the lower byte and in the light we can get the high one, right? So see, it's not doing the right thing. It's getting confused, and I think it's because that. That's something weird in my Python. So that, anyway, so let's get let's get back the pointer. So the pointer is going to be it's going to be a pointer to a character pointer to a byte. Uh, and well, I explain why I use that. I think did I explain why I use that? Well, I use that because I like it. You know, it's an unsigned integer or 8 bits although you know that's unsigned char unsigned character anyway but i like it that i like that so 
Right, so we know it is so it is the parameter or and then is uh, something like that should be okay. I think I'm not completely sure about this because this is a bit so and this is going to be system bit. Not sure, let's try that. <laughs> the compiler will tell us if he's happy or not. He's not happy at all. He's really, really, really unhappy. So invalid operands for oh right, so Hmm. And by operands of bitwise. Hmm. Yeah. So it's not happening about this because it's a pointer. So we can. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> this. See, for once, this will be simpler in assembler. Let's see if that can make them happy. Yes, exactly. And now draw frame that is in oh we don't have included aux here, so so that's why it's complaining about that. So no what is what are those functions? Right, so tiles attributes right and that is defined somewhere where where tiles menu tiles oh yeah so this two here mm -hmm. and it's not it's not a diagram it's it it's it program Right, so it compiles. Will it work? <laughs> I don't know. Let's try that. I mean, if it works, this is all for today, I think. And if it doesn't, ooh, this is a test. Nice. It works, but now it's probably broken because no. Actually, this is great. Why is working? I was expecting. <laughs> Wait, I was expecting the bottom of the screen to be a little. Oh no! I see what is going on. I know what's going on. Yeah, it works, and it's fine. Excellent. Okay, so what I was expecting is because when we erase this area we erase everything or the whole screen but then let's look let's take a look at the code so we fill the screen that erases all the screen but it's not actually erasing the screen it's erasing uh you know or buffer what we have the information about which tiles which sorry which eight per eight pixel cells are dirty or are just fine so that basically marks everything as dirty so we basically if we update the screen completely it will erase the complete screen then what we do on top of that is we draw the frame because we just remove everything and we are going to update on the real screen the top only then we set the tiles then we put the text and we did the top only, so it's not affecting the bottom where is the you know the stuff is already drawn. We restore the tiles and we go, you know, we wait for 64 uh, frames and um, oh, did I close that? Mm, right, nice. So that means that mm, 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 yeah. So we wait and we go back to the game. Now, when we are updating the heart so 
is updating the bottom only. But do we draw the hat? So the the stuff that we have at the bottom. Apparently we don't. And I thought we were doing that. That's interesting. So all oh, right <laughs> oh wow so when there is something to update on the hat on the bottom of the screen we validate the complete screen so in our buffer it's actually it doesn't exist anymore it's only existing on the screen so when we go to draw hat here what we do is that it's going to mark as dirty only the cells that we update really which means that uh, here, although uh, when we do this, all the buffer is empty. When we get the card, it's, tell you, it's telling the, the, the tile engine to the buffer, you know, it's telling everything is fine, everything is correct on screen, you don't need to do anything. And then we only invalidate the tiles that we change, which is this part here. So, which is it's fine. I don't think that we're going to have any problems. Let's see if, if we lose some life, some energy, will it be fine? Hmm, no, it's not. Uh, see, it's not quite right. See, because there's a bug in here. Anyway, but I think we can get away with this. So if I get restore this the, the energy so it works fine in there but it doesn't work fine where when I'm dealing with the test with the text hmm interesting well yeah it doesn't work fine it doesn't hmm yeah I need to investigate that one anyway close enough it's not be bad. I think I'm going to leave it here. Um, essentially, uh, the code we have here. So we have a couple of new files. We change the map, and all this is fine. So change the map. We don't care. This is just adding a new, the new entity. So we have a new function here to put the text from the terminal. The, you know, could have a better name, but that's the name I got now. And then the new code for the terminal, I mean, it's, it's including the beep here. It's probably going to beep or to make some noise. So the other, the other stuff is required because we are doing things related to the map and stuff like that. So this is pretty good. We were using this to, um, elements of the structure to store the pointer to the text when I'm packing we show in the text that seems to be fine this is the part of that and here we create the entity um, the terminal has a variable size so it has to be like this and this is the code that, yeah everything seems to be fine so so this is Actually, we it's not finish. Cool. So I think this is going to be all for today. Uh, almost one hour. <laughs> Just maybe I was too optimistic, um, or maybe I explain things, and that's why I'm being I'm being a little bit slower. Anyway, so this is working. Um, I would put a note. Uh, so I can look at the bug with the uh, with the energy bar, uh, but I think we can probably continue with doing it like that. Or I mean, just um, uh, oh, I just close everything so mm, so I don't have buffer open. Okay, so maybe. Maybe I need a 
function to fill only the top of the screen instead of erasing the computer screen although I mean this works it's not too bad I mean it's just uh, here when we are doing this there is something here that is not right oh I know what it is because max life is what you start with so it means that this should be max life plus one kind of could it be and that's probably affecting also the oxygen so let's do that and let's see if that fixes the problem and I guess it's only showing when we show the text because why not sure but that I think that's definitely the problem no that's not the problem Anyway, this is a different story for a different time. Okay, so that's everything for today. Um, um, remember, if you like the video, you may want to put a like, maybe, or leave a comment uh, if you have anything to say. Um, remember, you can subscribe if you want to. You don't want to miss any videos. Um, and see you next time. Bye.